Hey, it's Michael, a good book. It is a good book. Yeah. I didn't mean to blow it up on those stickers. Did John we, Smith? We had an old yeah. night. Yeah, he stopped by. Okay. Because yeah. that's what I, I was told that for. I couldn't blow any of this. No, I put them on in the See, rain. Just 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 hot night. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we, we tried certainly to right. So you didn't get it back every three or four years. You know, that seminar. For some reason, it just. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, the Coast Guard will be here. They, they went around and practiced uh, on and Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is a beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't need a lot of money. Just have to be the structure still sailing. Uh, no. yeah. 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 That's the no, no, it's actually what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Not sailing. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, should be so, under, so does that go under uh, the business list? It should go under. I'm going to add it. Okay. And do you know when? No, I don't like this. This appointments and the way we get a real job. Where was West? Okay. Yeah. 
All right, everybody. It is four o'clock. It's called uh, the uh, June 14th, 2023 meeting of the Harbor Commission order. Thank you all for coming. Uh, oh. Jim Bartlett. Here. <clears throat> Matt McGarren. Here. Chip Everest. Here. And I believe Karen Strau is on Zoom. Yes, I am. Tom Graham. Yes, here. Laura Corris. Here. Bill McCullough. Here. Bill Brown. Here. Greg Fisher. Here. John Baker. Here. You have a quorum. Great. Thanks, Jeff. I'd like to welcome the mayor to the table, representing himself. Yeah. He's got me into trouble several times. So we'll be better at it tonight. <laughs> Keep Welcome. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. Uh, the approval of minutes from our May 10th meeting were included in your packet. I was not in attendance. So we're not be voting on this, but were there any corrections? We're not, I'd entertain a motion to accept as presented. So moved. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks, Bill, for running that meeting. Uh, any comments on the agenda? I have two. Uh, one we should add after public comments, and that would be elections. We don't want to do the officer elections in June, which it is. And second would be uh, the item uh, under old business would be a report from uh, Chief of Police Knight. I'll just do that under public comment. Very nice. Yes, you can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. is the Harbor Master on here too? <laughs> Jimmy, the Harbor Master. I don't see it on here. Mike, you got to probably have a report for us, don't you? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Very quick one. Let's add that under uh, the last item of your business. You can tell that Victor had a baby, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, can we approve the agenda by consensus then with these additions? No questions. Sure, Great, thank you. On to public comment. Chief. This is good. I have a 430 meeting I have to be too. So I just want to update the commission. Uh, the, the permit parking seems to be going really, really well. We've issued, I know City House issued a lot of permits. We have like, a lot of inquiries about it. Um, Soul Street is filling up already. I'm not full, but there's several boats down there. So that's going well. And then our new Marine Patrol officer actually starts tonight. He's going to be doing his, he has to require through 40 hours of basically a class with Dean. So that starts tonight. His name is Larry Mosher. He's a retired pneumonia firefighter, lives up on Washington Street. So he's actually a city resident. 
and I think he's really squared away. He's probably in his late fifties, so it, sh it should go really good. He's very excited about it. He already signed up for several classes on his own to do, and so um, I'm excited to have him and I'll get him to one of your meetings, hopefully the July 12th meeting, so you can meet him. Great, good work. Any questions? He was our only applicant, but actually, oh, I had three, but he was, everybody else dropped out and he's phenomenal. I think he'll be a, a really good addition to Dean and to the waterway. Good. Perfect. Good. 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 Sorry, what's that? Is this giving the warnings? Yes. <laughs> so I've heard of your last name, Tom Graham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so thank you for letting me go first. Any questions at all? Not at all, Chief. All right, thank, thank you. you. Have a good okay. meeting. Thanks. Chief. Any other public comment? Great, good to see folks in the audience. Thanks for coming. Old business, first item is uh, Little Traverse Ferry Foundation license renewal. Uh, Victor supplied a little narrative in our packet and a copy of the uh, uh, license agreement in here. Uh, in essence, it was for two years, which is expiring now. At a cost of, I would call, $1,000 a year. Is that correct? On that? And I see the ferry boat people are here. And I've heard the boats are still on the hard. And you're starting tomorrow. So you guys got a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be in the water tomorrow. But... <laughs> okay. uh, is there anything you guys would like to talk about before we talk about it here at the table? Uh... Well, we're committed to it, and we've got a brand new engine going in the boat as we speak. Uh, a brand new Caterpillar, American made, um, remanufactured engine. We were a little delayed with parts for that this season, which is why the boat's still on the hard. But uh, we'd love to continue service, and uh, that kind of investment should buy us uh, about 10 more years out of the current vessel that we've got. So, you folks are thinking long term. Okay, great. Uh, then why don't we bring it back to this table? Any commissioners have any comments about the operation of the ferry? Concerns, questions before we start to move any further? Yeah, Tom. I like the ferry service. I'd like to be able to walk up to it and pay X dollars and get on the boat and not have to go to my computer to get on a boat. You can. Can you? I was told last year earlier oh, you, you couldn't. You can. It's just uh prior to this year, we had a little bit of a challenge with reservation systems on the boat. And we have to count for everybody on the boat for the Coast Guard electronically. And without that capability, it was just really tough for us. So we think we, we tried to encourage people not to do it, but believe it or not, we had more walk-ons last year than we did in the last three years combined. So this year we'll be prepared for it. And yes, you can. Uh, you have to be a little, there have been issues in the past where the boat has been at capacity. And if you walk up and there's no room, that's, you know, a gamble, I guess. That. But yes, you will be, you can absolutely walk up and get on. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. What is your current capacity? I know it was during COVID, it was constrained. Are you at mm -hmm. full capacity? And what is, and what is that? The Coast Guard certifies the boat for 49 passengers, but uh, for comfort, we try to keep it lower than that. Uh, you know, we really, shut down the online ticketing a little bit below that. And mm -hmm. I know Amy, really, I let her handle this yeah. more than me. But. I feel like 36 is a nice number just because there's 25 seating in the perimeter and then we have some bench seating in the middle. Some people like to stand. So it's a nice comfortable number. We can go over that legally. We try not to, unless it's a private charter and people expect it, but you run into issues if there are bikes and strollers and you know, you have, over that capacity it's of 36. 36. So yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what we set our initial limit at. It goes along with, we shut down the online sales and you have one person, two people, five people at the dock that want to buy tickets and they're standing there. We can still accommodate them legally. Exactly. But they just have to understand it's basically standing room. What are the hours of operations? Uh, 9.30 to 9.30 essentially. Starts at 9.30 out of Bay Harbor, and the last boat will lay Harbor Springs at 8.30. It's to uh, Bay Harbor between 9.15 and 3. Any other questions from the table? Uh, I, I have uh, just one. Any terms of this lease you guys think need to be revised? Uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. 
No. I mean, things work well for us. We appreciate that support. Okay. And it's kind of run itself, essentially. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and I think our job here is to uh, make sure we're comfortable with the terms of the, of the lease and the uh, probably the two big ones in here because the rest of it I think is pretty cut and dry is the length of the lease period. We're at two years with them and they're comfortable with that, which I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Any questions, any headaches <laughs> from anybody on that one? No, I mean, I just want to also let everybody know that when the ferry started a couple of years ago, I was on, I was actually on the board. Um, I stepped off the board last year. So uh, I'm highly supportive of the uh, institution and Chris, definitely with Chris and Amy. And um, so I'm, I'm proud to be associated with it, but I'm not associated with it anymore. Thank you. So we're okay with the length of lease. The other one would be the uh, license fee. Is everybody comfortable with a thousand? Mm -hmm. uh, just FYI, and I'm not saying you go there, but we did ask the Dock and Ridge company to pay us six thousand a year instead of a thousand a year. Just so we know where both of our lease arrangements stand with it, those folks at Fort Park. Just also as a reminder, when when the lease was signed two years ago, the ferry contributed the extension of the dock. The dock. And how much did that cost? How much? Sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. Quite an investment in that area. And that actually is owned by the city. <coughs> right. So that was a donation back to us, which is part of the reason why that was a thousand dollars a year on that. So, how much did we increase the dredge? Uh, Anyone remember? I think we went from three, maybe to six, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'm comfortable with the same with thousand. I was just curious, and they may also be. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Okay, any other suggestions onto this lease? <clears throat> I had to entertain a motion to approve the license for the Ferry uh, Foundation for a two year period, same terms that we had. In fact, I'll make that motion in the same terms we had in the prior lease. I'll second it. Who seconded that? Chip. Chip. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Jeff, would you do a roll call vote, please? John Baker. Yes. Greg Fisher. Yes. Bill Brown. Yes. <clears throat> Bill McCullough. Yes. Laura Horst. Yes. Tom Grant. Yes. Kip Everest. Yes. Okay. Matt McGarren. Right. Thank yes. you so much. And Jim Bartlett. Yes. Motion passes. Get to work. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll get that into this. Labor blow, right? <laughs> Chris, you've done a lot of the work yourself. I'll see you on the boat. I'll be driving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. On to new business. Uh, where, commercial. where do you put your um, election? Isn't that old business? Oh, yeah, I skipped right over. Uh, let's do elections. Uh, up our uh, chairman, vice chairman, and some victim for secretary. So I would entertain uh, nominations uh, for chairman. Let's start with that. I make the motion to nominate Jim Bartlett. Support. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Stay. Same for opposed. Don't say anything, Michael. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate the support, and uh, we'll continue to work hard and earn your trust. Please. Next up would be uh, Vice Chairman. I'd entertain a motion for that individual. I would. And I'll second. Motions made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same for opposed. Thanks, Bill. Thank y'all. And then I don't remember who our secretary is. Usually it's the new guy. Right. Well, <laughs> it's the easiest job in color. I believe it was me. Oh, it was me, Jay. 
Not the new guy, it's the person who's not here. Okay, so I well, nominate Karen. Perfect. perfect. Motion's been made as a second there. And yeah. 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 Right. Matt quickly seconds that suggestion. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same for opposed. Congratulations, Karen. Thank you very much. I couldn't vote, of course, but whatever. <laughs> We're advisors. You. you can always vote. Uh, Thank you. We have our swing ready for the upcoming year. Uh, new business. Item uh, one, commercial license review, review for outfitter and minor marine services. You can read what uh, Victor has said in there. Uh, Michael, unless I'm remiss, I don't think we've had any trouble with either of these two guys at all. Either one, and they're both fully paid up. So, yeah. Any questions about, concerns about these two? How many licenses are we authorized to have if there are other people? I don't know if there are. We have a, we have a total, if I recall, of six, but they're split into categories. So, and we also haven't received any other applications other than these two. What we'd be talking about right now. Uh, no further discussion. I'd entertain a motion to accept or recommend approval of these two. So moved. So second. Moved by Chip, seconded by Bill. That we approve the renewal of commercial licenses for Outfitter and Meyer Marine. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same for opposed. And I would abstain from this, please. Vic, you, you're never going to retire from the workshop, I don't think. Well, no, this is for Josh. Oh, gotcha. Actually, I think I, I tried to abstain from the workshop from last week, <laughs> the last month. It didn't show up that way. But I think I'm better for Josh. Gotcha. <laughs> So we had all eyes with one absent abstaining baker. Motion passes on it. Uh, thank you. And now to the uh, is Mary Jane. I thought she was coming. So did I. Okay. In fact, I texted Willis about an hour and a half ago. So get your mom here, please. So yeah. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the next discussion here. Maybe she'll show up. Okay. And we'll go from there. Uh, in the course of the last year or two, we've had uh, discussions about Fort Park, and there were some commissioners who were interested in discussing that. And uh, to that end, uh, we've got a couple of layout maps just to remind you what the place looks like. <clears throat> so I thought we'd take some time today to kind of open up the floor and see what uh, concerns, comments, what people think works or what may not work. With Ford Park. A little background on this, this was built with waterway grant fund money uh, with the DNR on it. They did the design. Yes. I'm sorry. Of the park. And it has been uh, added to and tweaked, but nothing significant in terms of the design of it uh, since its inception. Okay, so how old is the building in the middle? I don't know. You mean the sewer authority building? It's been there since. Is it sewer authority? Yeah. Since, yeah, okay. that's what it was originally. Okay. When I was a kid, my dad, I was like, Sam, he'd, he'd sit up at my dad's house and the Browns went that way. It was the east wind, it went that way, it was the west wind. <laughs> <laughs> you could just see the Browns, you know, like a, like a, a brown river come in, you know, a lot. Of, it, just, it was just a small chlorine plant. I think yeah. that's all I did, dump chlorine. Is it chlorine. abandoned or is it still used? No, it's abandoned. No, we use it. It's, it's not used for sewer, but it's used for bath. Sewer in a bath. And we've also had, I think Harbor Inc. was in there for a year. We've had various nonprofits over the years, kind of, to, but nothing really stuck in that building. So, other than the restrooms, which were just redone or repainted. Redone last year. Last year. Last spring. Yeah. It looked great. Does it show the lift station? Uh, one of the more interesting things about that piece of property is the water table. When the water is high, as it has been the last couple of years, that green area is lucky, really wet. 
waters down a foot. I don't think it would be quite as bad this year, but uh, during high water years, we actually had standing water over the road as you come to the ramp itself from the west entrance uh, all the time. So uh, there may be some challenging construction needs in there if we decide to, to do something a little different. But Another thing, Jim, and I, I don't see it noted on the site plan here is um, between the building and the street, I think over on the east side of the property, there is a lift station. There's a lift station there. Yeah. Like, uh, Which is why you see no parking on grass over there, I think. And also where the kayaks get launched. Right. That's a new. That's new to this. You know, if I can jump in, mm -hmm. we've been talking about this as long as I've sat at the table. And it comes up in all different topics. Sometimes it's like parking's too hard. Sometimes we don't have enough kayak racks. Sometimes it's uh, the road floods. It almost seems instead of looking at what we have, we should start brainstorming what what is it we want it to be when we're done? What how much parking do you think? belongs here or you know the trailer should they be here should they be just kind of start that brainstorming instead of try to fix this i don't think it's fixable i think it's a redesign and bill you've done a lot of work on this and you've brought thoughts to the table and then something else always trumps and we don't get to get to the point mm -hmm. so i'd like to either pull out all of our old minutes and we've addressed so many things but right now what is it that would make this part workable for our community. That's how I start. I think over the years, uh, the use has shifted. We didn't used to have a ferry. We didn't used to have barge. Um, we didn't used to have as, as much demand for kayaks and little hand launched boats there. Um, the prioritization of vehicles over green space has always kind of bothered me because fundamental view that I have is that that green space on that water is some of the most valuable property in the universe, you know, <laughs> and we're using it to park cars. And so that's always bothered me a little bit. Um, so I guess if, if we were starting with a clean slate, I would try to make, take as much of the green space by the kayak from the kayak launch to the boat launch and move the asphalt as far back so that the picnicking is not like in the middle there where it's rarely ever gets used. It's move that down there, move, accommodate density of storing kayaks, for example. <coughs> One of the things that we have is change the racks from being parallel to the Irish building to being, you know, uh, accessible from the side, you could put like five times as many boats in there in the same space, but you'd need to gain like where the trees and, the, and part of that trailer parking, take some of that. And then uh, uh, there are definitely traffic and safety and pedestrian concerns because you got people walking across that. And I don't know how you get around that other than um, you know, you, you need to have a wide enough turning radius for, uh, you know, these trailer will boats to get through there. So you can't just do it an in and out, narrow it up too much. But I, I agree with what you said, that I'd like to do a, kind of a green or a clean slate with all the constituencies, all the various issues, put it on the table and then try to do you know, like a prioritization you know, in a perfect world with unlimited everything, this is what we do, and then bang it back to reality from that. And I remember Mike talking about the lighting and the turning of boats to get in here, that it's not that safe. Do it. Am I right? Is that I think there's doing? a lot of components that make it relatively unsafe. Lighting is really from the water. That's a different issue. My biggest concern is pedestrians always have to cross traffic to get anywhere. So there are some simple solutions and then there are more complicated, but mm -hmm. I agree with you. Someone needs to sit down and gather what is that space for? Because I have quite a list of what happens 
there. And maybe it's all appropriate, maybe it's not, but then you need to accommodate it with you know, safe ways to transport people and dogs and cars and trailers. I also agree with Bill that it's a very expensive place for the parking lot, but you have to probably have some parking. It was designed a long time ago and it was probably a very good design for what it was used for a long time ago and the uses have just changed. So I have four pages of notes. If you want me to read them, otherwise, probably you know what I'm going to say. At some point, if you could, you know, make them available to us, that'd be great. One item that hasn't changed since its early use is the price: five dollars. At five dollars, you get a lot of traffic. If it was ten dollars, you wouldn't get as much traffic. I did a survey, thanks to Nick, last year off of the trial balance. Anybody have any idea how many people, if they all paid $5 and it didn't come out even, so they didn't all pay five, some of them may pay 10, some of them may have nothing, but the launch free ramp fees equal $5,400. That's 1,087 people cramming in that little space. And that's just the ones that decided to pay five bucks. And that doesn't account for anything commercial, doesn't account for anything else. And you're right, the things have changed. The boat trailers have gotten larger. The boats have gotten larger. Pickup trucks for the trailer and a hitch are 23 foot long. They don't fit. They stick out. It only takes one to stick out, and then you can't get by. I had a discussion with uh, uh, Josh about how they try and pull in. Now, they're experienced people. They pull in, they back out. My thought was, what if short term, a consideration, that you put a lay-by in? I mean, they're all over Europe. When you pull in the just for kayak and the boat launch, small boat right there, parallel. So you really wind up at three because the people that know how to get in and out can get in and out. It's the people that aren't as familiar with their own boats and trailers, which stop everything. And safety becomes a big issue. I don't know if you even want to consider doing anything, but it's a thought. The other is, I think we all have great ideas. Collecting the information would be wonderful, but I think we ought to have somebody professional come out and assess the fact you have so many square feet, that's all you've got. What do you want it to do? How do you want it to function? Less trailer parking, more trailer parking. They're always full on popular weekends. So where do you tell them to go if they're not there? That I don't have an answer for. Well, we send them to Zoll Street. I'm sorry? They get sent to Zoll Street. Zoll Street, the overflow parking. Yeah. Right yeah. back here. And a lot of people know that. A lot of a lot of folks that come just for a short period of time, if you can direct them, <coughs> I've been down here, MJ's, trying to direct them. She was telling me when they first started, when uh, Mr. Gruder was manager here, he wanted to put a coffee can down there for $5. And her suggestion was, that's a great idea, except the first person puts five in, the second person may take five out. So they went to send an envelope. So she's been down there for quite a while. She's seen it all. That's just a thought. I don't, what's the closest other launch and what's the fee? Petoskey. And how much? I don't think there are any five bucks. I think. And I think if you go to Boeing City, it's five bucks. Well, it's for average. That's free. Going on in Conway. Yeah. And that's a parking nightmare. Yeah, there's no place yeah. to park. <laughs> and they have no options there because that's all the land they have. So they park on the road right away. Yeah. So I mean, sometimes a raise in price may direct people that are coming up that use Potassi for five bucks. If it's a big difference, it's a big difference. So I'm not saying to raise it just to stop people from getting to the water. You want to be able to get to the water. I would like them to get to the water, our water. I don't want to discourage people financially. Oh, I mean, $5. If you have a boat and a trailer and whatever, you can afford $5 more, but I'm not after their money. I'm not. That's not my answer. I think that has been the general feeling politically from the commission up to the council table that the $5 fee, if you raise it to 10 bill, we aren't going to make and a lot more money. Uh, well, I wasn't suggesting you make any more money. I would say my thought was that you'd have less congestion. And I think the general thought in the past is <coughs> to make it affordable for as affordable as we can for it. And that was a five dollars. And it's also competitive with what happens around the neighborhood. I'm not uh, I'm not passing judgment. I'm just but you know so launch yeah. launch fees are maybe when I've asked about this over the years, I don't believe the city <laughs> has a engineered site plan for that site. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've asked hundreds of times. So it may be a first step for the Harbor Commission to ask 
the city to actually get a site plan because we can do this all day long without any dimensions. It's pretty hard to work with. And then you could, you know, the process of what are the priorities? If access is the priority, then dollars isn't as important, maybe. I mean, you're going to spend a ton of money to fix this place. So um, how to get as many people and uses as practical, or maybe not duplicate uses that are elsewhere in the city. It would all just be a planning thing. But there isn't that piece of paper to start with. Uh, I'm not aware of it either. I was looking for it for uh, today. Uh, the state designed and built this through uh, grant and aid monies with uh, through the DNR Waterways Division on that thing. Uh, I think what we ought to do is kind of where Bill was in, and that is to come up with what we want it to be. And I think the best way to do that would be to put three or four people together on an ad hoc committee and uh, bring it back to us with some comments. And we, so we got something to start with and sort of sit around the table. And if uh, that makes sense, go ahead. Here. Is there is there an appetite to change it? Is there a- Well, go ahead. Yeah, is there an, I mean, is there a glaring deficiency that's, or are we just, um, Improving it. I think it depends on who you want to talk to. There's okay. many opinions. You know, I when I was harbor master for ten years, I watched that thing daily on it. And at that time, we went from the honor system with a cup to the infamous Bill Jewler at Gate, mm -hmm. where a guy showed up in my office on the Fourth of July, took off his hat and bled all over my desk, and the gate hit him in the head when he was trying to put his boat on a trailer. To more people standing down there to correct to collect fees, and we we could never collect enough to cover the payroll. So we are where we are, not because of not paying attention, but because we've tried a bunch of things over the years, and this seemed to make the most sense. With and the same with the type of uses down there. We have built the kayak racks like that. We have added the barge stuff in there. We've added the ferry stuff in there, and they've all seemed to uh, fit at work at some level. But there are some folks who think it's, and I don't know if there's a better design or not, but that, to be honest with you. But I don't think we're the guys to design it. I think a professional with the state, because I want to go back to the state and have them fund this, because we're not going to have a half a million bucks or more to do this. That's all there is to it. So I think our job would be to figure out what we want it to look like and then hand it off and then go to the state and see what they say. So, I mean, I agree with that access is really important, um, but safety also, is there something that can be an easy fix from a safety perspective that can be done? Um, you know, you, well, to my knowledge, we had any accidents down there? No, not again, to my knowledge, neither. You know, we did strike the crosswalk when they come yeah. across the ferry on that. We did put in a piece of sidewalk that ties it into the two that go alongside the parking area in there so that folks don't have to walk along the road unless they want to. You can come in and park in, in the car parking spot in the west entrance, get on a sidewalk, go to the ferry, and only have to cross at a crosswalk which is signed straight down the street, which is what happens on the M-19 when you yeah. go through there now. So the state originally paid to put it in? Yes. They don't pay any maintenance? No. no. Part of the reason we did the five dollars was to have an equitable way of funding maintenance on it because we were people were, were getting washout underneath sure. the ramp there uh, from power loading and stuff, and I think it cost us thirty grand or something like that to fix it. And so, um, rather than have that come out of the rest of the waterfront, figured user pay. That makes sense. That's how that came to be. You know, ideas uh, like Bill suggested of turning the kayak racks to run east to west instead of alongside the Irish building. Uh, that would certainly allow us to increase the number of kayaks down there, but that brings more associated parking, more associated people. And if we say a million MJ times, it's a balance. Pardon me? MJ is right outside. Oh. Awesome. And it would also reduce the depth of parking in the very few car spaces we have. So everything's a trade-off on this. So let's stop on this for a minute. See the audience. <laughs>
Oh no, no worries. Hey, Willis. Jane, thanks for coming. You were great. My apologies for being late. <laughs> well, we're used to you being late, folks, but not you. <laughs> I agree. The reason we wanted you to come today was to say thank you for your many years of service out at Ford Park. You've done a great job for us, represented the city in a variety of ways, always with an upbeat attitude, and you put up with a lot of those knuckleheads down there that were trying to tell you what to do. And you handled them in a marvelously kind manner. There's lots of fun. Well, it's, you did a spectacular job, and we all appreciate it. And so we uh, you know, kind of come up with a little certificate of appreciation that says thank you for your years of service with that. Found this on land range, and it's all up your way. The appreciation for your many years of service and supervision of the city sport park launch ramp. Your friendliness and engagement with voters has made their experiences the best they can be. Along with that, do I still have my job? <laughs> no, this is your retirement. <laughs> yes, you do. We're looking forward to having you back. In addition to that, the uh, Historical Society has donated tickets to either one of two events. They'll be sending the Island Queen up for, uh, to observe the blessing of the fleet, but then there's also a sunset cruise on the day before. So you make your choice, and there's two tickets there for you and the front of yours. Oh, okay. That's from the Historical Society, and that was uh, Kristen Bale of the And again, thank you so much. Okay. okay, back to Fort Park. Willis, you can't go on the trip. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary Jane. You're welcome. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> it was a chore. Your blessing down there. JB, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, just want to make a couple quick comments. I think we would probably be on the same page in terms of what we see the need to be in terms of any modifications of Ford Park. I do agree that it would be um, a great idea if funds are available to have a professional engineering organization, whatever design organization to help us put our ideas on paper. Um, and I do like the idea of a small committee coming together to come back to the Harp Commission with specifics and I'd be happy to serve on that. Thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts? Greg Evans, good comment. Thanks for being here. No, I think everybody okay with forming an ad hoc committee chaired by Bill McCullough? <laughs> And other than Karen, would anybody else like to be under? I think maybe three, four people kind of keep it. Tom, Greg? Yep, Tom and Greg. Great. Great. Bill, four enough for you? Uh, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll collect information from anybody. But... Right. And you guys would be charged with uh, kind of coming up with a, a uh, blueprint of uses that we want to see down there and what suggestions you might have to account. and recognize there is some work contractually obligated to like the ferry and the barge. At some point, we will need an accurate site plan. And I don't know if to uh, Victor, but Park must have something. And if not, we'll see if we can come up with that. Yeah. Uh, but I think the big thing is to get this part of it and then hand that off to a, a uses thing to, and maybe we can do this with the state and have them come up with it. They design them all over the place. We want to give it somebody that has significant experience with it, I think. And go for it. <laughs> Everybody comfortable with that? Yep. Yes. Great. Thanks.
Uh, Michael, we're on to the Harbor Master. Uh, well, the good news is that Bob's going to be starting. Bob Toma, we're going to bring him on to help Mary Jane out down at the ramp. Um, be a little bit more of a monitor down there um, to help you out as much as he possibly can. And I think that'll also give us a really good head start on gathering information on usage and the way people behave down there. And, um, you know, Bob sees a lot of that from the working next door at Irish. I think he's really going to be a, a help with that. Uh, I talked to Zach Jones and Doc and Dredge. They are finished up tomorrow, which is their day to be done. And off the water, not off the water, but, you know, pulling themselves over to Wall Street stock. Um, all the power poles have been inspected and good to go um, on the east and the west dock. And we also got the west dock power poles installed two weeks ago. They've all been tested and they're ready to go. I took a uh, lower four docks this year after putting four risers on two years ago. I had to pull a couple more off this year. So fortunately, I was smart enough and I'm not quite sure how that happened to build everything in sections so they can all go back if the water ever comes up to where it was in 2020. So. And the transient revenue to date is last year we were at 28,807 for the same day. This year we're at 29,290. We've had a lot of people take advantage of the uh, unlimited stay that we offer through the 5th of July. Um, and that figure from last year included the Boyne City fleet, who was here to us the weekend before. So that was that number contributed pretty heavily to that $28,000. And they'll be here this weekend, which should really bump that number up for the, for the month of June. And speaking of ramp permits, we have sold 173 as of today and have had a, a lot of people appreciate the fact that we're not going to stickers. They don't have to remember the hang tag. It doesn't end up in a different car and then they get have to pay their five bucks. So I think that's gonna work out really well for us. And they're super visible too. And down there checking quite a bit and they just stand out like a sore thumb on trailers. So. Mine was number 188, I think I got yesterday. It doesn't count the ones that haven't been sold yet. Okay. <laughs> and that's my report. Thank you. Good to hear the licensing is working. Yeah, I think it's going to work really well for us. Yeah. And Tina has been really good about getting uh, trailer plate numbers <clears throat> for folks to make sure that we have that on their application. Now they're permanent plates, but at least we have a record from year to year of the trailer plate number to match up with the permit. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. Any comments, questions for Mike? Good. Uh, any comments from board members? Excellent. Well, then our next meeting is July 12th at 4 p.m. here at City Hall. And we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Especially you. Thank you. Thank you.